Hey everybody, um, doing a video today on DIN rail terminal blocks because the video that I wanted to watch on these did not seem to exist on YouTube because I have no idea why all the marketing ads just talk about, you know, their product features, I guess, without actually talking about how these things work, how they're configured, what the options are. Uh, I, had a, I had a bunch of questions that I kind of figured out by looking at a bunch of different pictures and reading up a bunch of different stuff and making a bunch of assumptions, but now that I got a couple of these in from McMaster, I can uh, go through you know, exactly what they're like, um, maybe answer some questions that you guys might have. So basically, uh, a DIN rail terminal block is this thin little piece that mounts to a DIN rail and you can connect wires to both sides of it. Now don't worry about the color here, these are you know, this is just the plastic body, you can get them color coded in different ways. Um, I have three types here, there's a, lots of different types um, and some accessories so I'll go through uh, sort of their operation and, and how you put them together. This is the this is the most basic one right here, this is just two terminals. You have uh, input on one side input on the other, this clips uh, into the DIN rail, uh, and then it's covered on one side and it's open. Um, when you ha put all these together you can get these little covers that snap on the exposed side so that you don't electrocute yourself or anything like that. Um, and then actually once they're on the DIN rail you put a cover and then you put one of these guys which is just a screw down clip that kind of holds this in place so these don't slide on your DIN rail because these have a, they don't have screws, they just clip on. So this is what actually holds them in place. Um, so that's the ba that's the most basic one. This is a single level is what they call this. Um, then I have a double level here and you can see on the bottom there's a bar that goes across so you can make a connection in here that'll come out here and you can make a connection in here that'll come out here. These two are not tied together in some they are, um, and it appears that there's a way that you can tie these together. You can see how there's a screw hole up here and a screw hole down here. Um, some of them have diodes between them and other features like that. But you know, for this, what you might do is you might have like your hot going into the top and your ground going into the bottom. That way you could have like this be the termination point for one you know, light or something like that. Um, one of the questions I had when I was looking at these was if you use the jumpers, which I'll, I'll explain in one second, will they, are they jumping both at the same time? And the answer is no. You can jump the bottom level uh, independently of the top level. So what the jumpers are, these guys over here, it's just a bus bar with little screw, um, little screws, and that these fit in that center slot right here. So imagine if you had, so this is 10, imagine if you had 10 terminal blocks all connected, you'd uh, screw the bus bar down in there, and that would tie them all together. So you'd have, you know, let's say you, if you had it like this, you had 10 of these together, you put, let's say, a hot in here, that would give you 19 possible uh, distribution points because you'd have your, your hot in and then you'd have, you know, 20 minus 1, 19, uh, 9 on one side, 10 on the other side. Same thing with these guys. You can do a bus, uh, a jumper up at the top here or down here. And the way I'm going to use that actually is, and this is going to be great because uh, for distributing signals where I have sort of one source signal and a bunch of returns, I can add one uh, input on the bottom here, tie the bottom together as my source, get voltage off the bottom, and then have each individual one as a termination point for the signals. Um, I'm not sure if that's the the industry approved way to have things going in and out both sides or if you're only supposed to pass through one way or the other but that's how I'm going to use it because uh, it saves me money using only a couple of these things. Um, so, Oh yeah, and then this last one 
This is another single level terminal block, but this has an inline fuse holder. You see the input here connects to one clip, the output connects to the other clip, and there's a hole at the top to see the fuse, and you can pop this guy open like that. And uh, that's your little fuse holder there, so you throw a fuse in there uh, to protect a, a branch circuit. And then, you know, if there's light, you can see the fuse in there, see if it's blown or not. So, um, if you have any questions on these guys, post a uh, post something in the comments. I hope this answers some questions because I had a bunch of questions and I don't know why nobody explained it this simply or even had close-ups to see. You know, every picture is like gray and blacked out and kind of like this, and you don't even you can't see if these are connected or not or how the buses interact with them. You know, this one has these three screw terminals. I guess you could somehow put a screw down through both of these to connect them if you wanted to join all of these together. These are the ones, I think these are just the generic ones available on McMaster car. Um, if you search for DIN rail uh, terminal blocks, looks like they're made by N Enterec, N Entratech. So, uh, thanks for watching. See ya.